Welcome back to another edition of Tech in the City. My name is Yvonne Pilon, President and CEO of WeTech Alliance. Tech in the City is a regular video segment where we're going to talk about the latest in technology, gadgets, and really what has our community and the world buzzing when it comes to technology and innovation. Today I'm joined by a great guest, Mark Butler, who is the Director of Communications for the Windsor Detroit Bridge Authority. Thank you so much for joining us, Mark. Thank you for having me. So let's get into it. What is the Windsor Detroit Bridge Authority? Well, Windsor Detroit Bridge Authority is a Canadian Crown Corporation, which has been, um, which is responsible for the building, the operation of the new Gordie Howe International Bridge. We are currently in the procurement process to select a private sector partner to uh, build, finance, operate, maintain the new bridge. Um, that will be um, starting construction next year. Excellent. I know you alluded to this, you know, bridge of the future, and I know we're all excited to see uh, what this bridge will look like. But let's talk about the importance of international crossings for our local community, as well as really our, our whole province and country. Well, I mean, Canada and the United States share a huge trading relationship. It's one of the most important in the world. Um, but if you take a look at all the crossings between Canada and the United States, the Windsor-Detroit Gateway, and that comprises of the, the, the rail tunnel, the uh, pedestrian, the, pardon me, the uh, traffic tunnel, uh, the current bridge, uh, there is a barge that carries hazardous goods. That is responsible for 25% of the entire bilateral trade between Canada and the United States. Over $100 billion. That's huge. Um, so as the economies of Canada and the United States are, are very, very much attuned to what happens at the border, uh, Windsor Detroit is very important to that. That's amazing. And so in, th in spirit of the theme of this show, Tech in the City, mm -hmm. what do you anticipate uh, when it comes to technology innovation in this new bridge? Well, again, we're looking at the proponents, so we, we haven't got the final designs yet. Uh, we're encouraging our proponent teams, and there are three of them. And I, I would say even beyond encouraging, we're sort of uh, really uh, suggesting to them, let's go out and try to be really innovative in what this bridge can offer. Because we're a brand new bridge, we have the luxury that we have the ability to go out and talk to our stakeholders, the people who are going to be using the bridges, uh, trucking companies, uh, uh, major corporations, uh, individuals, uh, commuters who are going across, saying, what do you need to have to make the experience of the Gordie Howe Bridge the one that you want to have? Um, and so we're hearing from trucking companies that time is money. We need to get from A to B as quickly as possible. Um, and so what we want to have is an expedited tolling system. So we're looking at transponders. And, and so we're looking at possibilities of maybe that transponders can be interoperable with other transponders. So instead of having a dashboard of, uh, board of different uh, uh, machines, you have one that's, that can work with a, a tolling highway somewhere else, as well as with the Gordie Howe International Bridge. People going across want to have a, uh, a slap, just put their debit card or their visa machine on a reader and they can go through. But beyond that, we're looking at the two principal tenants, if you will, the customs uh, and immigration personnel on both sides of the border. They have very specific technologies they have to look at, license plate readers, they have to look at large scale imaging, which is x-rays, if you will, for vehicles, uh, detection equipment. Uh, vehicle identification, uh, VIN number, identification uh, uh, readers, all those things have to, be, uh, have to be there for them. And which makes the inspection process going through and, and, and um, as quick as possible and, and as unobtrusive as possible. We're lucky because we're building the bridge at the very beginning. That we're not changing existing infrastructure or doing a rehab, if you will. We can start building those systems for today and tomorrow and the years to come. So, for instance, we have a multi-million dollar project underway at the moment to lay cabling and conduit where the cables go in. Um, we're making enough space for future cabling uh, in case new technology comes up in years to come that require future cabling. So we're going to be ready when uh, the bridge opens uh, uh, in, in the few years to come, but we'll be ready for also new technologies as they emerge. And as you know, technology changes on a daily basis. So it I, does indeed. So I commend your team for really looking, you know, reaching out to the users of, of this new bridge and, and what their challenges are. So maybe guide me through, you know, I'm used to driving across the Ambassador Bridge or going through a tunnel. How will my experience change um, with the proposal or the proposed new, new Gordie Well, I, bridge? I think the biggest change is going to be that currently, if you're going across uh, the existing bridge, uh, you're going through here in Church Road, and and you have the new uh, right honourable Herb Gray Parkway, which will bring you up so far, but then you still have to go through. 
there's still a lot of stop and go traffic and you're going through essentially uh, a, a kind of like commercial and, and residential area of the city. With the Gordie Howe International Bridge, you will have freeway to freeway access. So you're going to be getting on the Highway 401, which continues essentially the Right Honourable Herb Gray Parkway is an extension of the Highway 401. You're going to go into our plaza on the Canadian side. You're paying the tolls, whether you're going to the U.S. or coming in from uh, the U.S. You go through the customs process. You go across the bridge. You get on a highway in the U.S. You have absolutely no stopping other than for going through the tolling procedure and the customs procedure. So essentially, you can go from the east coast of Canada down to the southern United States or vice versa without stopping whatsoever other than for the actual uh, an inspection process. That's very important for people. I mean, especially for commercial users. They want, to uh, where they want to get to their destination as quickly as possible. And you know what? For people who are going to work or people going shopping, you want to get there as quickly as possible. No, of well. course. And when it comes to business, time is money. And Absolutely. also less stopping means fuel efficiency, which is really, really Absolutely. great. So I, I think just talking about all this, uh, you know, the proposed tech that's going to be in the new bridge, I think we're going to have to do a part two of Tech in the City where we can actually see all this great innovation um, with our own eyes. But, um, you know, the talk, there's a lot of talk with these international crossings, and especially Windsor, Detroit, um, in terms of a testing site for autonomous vehicles. What are your thoughts on that? Well, I mean, Windsor, Detroit has, um, and certainly there's been a lot of talk about it, and, and, and as people know, there has already been testing going through, uh, going through the tunnel. Um, what I can say is that we have had discussions with our proponents. We've had discussions uh, with stakeholders who were involved with this. We're looking at what's known as vehicle to vehicle, to vehicle uh, connectivity. Uh, where the piece of infrastructure, if you will, the, the, the bridge itself will talk to the vehicle and say, this is what the weather conditions are, this is what, the, uh, what lane you should use, this is what queue you should be in for, for tolling or what queue you should be in for the, uh, uh, the inspection process. So yes, I mean, it, it's going to be happening soon. Uh, I can't be more definitive. Uh, we're prepared for it. We're preparing for it as it comes along. The Gordie Howe International Bridge is going to be built very soon. But it's not going to be just for the next four or five years. It's going to be for the many years to come. Um, so we want to have a bridge that's going to be adaptable, uh, a bridge that's going to embrace technology both now, be ready for technology and enhancements in the years to come. So, um, yeah, it's very exciting. And can people are going to be able to walk and bike across they the bridge, which is amazing. They can walk and bike amazing. across it, which is, which is amazing. Uh, um, people who are fit or not so fit. Uh, they'll I, get I, fit by They'll get across. fit. Um, but even with that, I mean, talking about technology, there are certain requirements for, for inspection processes mm -hmm. on both sides of the border, uh, whether you come across in a vehicle or you're walking across. But we also want to have safety and security that's involved. So there's going to be cameras. Uh, uh, and the cameras would be able to to identify whether or not there's any security issue going on. Um, so even with something as simple as a pedestrian, uh, a lot of technology is involved with that. Yeah, every moving piece has so many other moving Absolutely. pieces. So we've heard about the Gordie Howe Bridge for so for 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 many many almost years now. What why what can you tell people? Why is this so important to our local community? What really will this do? And I, I want to get people excited about this because I think it's not just job creation, and economic development. We have this beautiful new beautiful bridge and I can't wait to see Instagram well, and we're gonna see you know this beautiful new bridge all over you know it's, it's interesting I, I I've talked to people and they ask you what you do and you say you're working for the Great Hill International Bridge um, and you know some of my colleagues are working for another infrastructure project you don't see those infrastructure projects on postcards you will see the Great Hill International Bridge on the postcard it will be the new iconic symbol of Windsor Detroit I can tell you without getting into too much detail that the size of the bridge, I mean, so looking at the piers, are going to rival the height of the Renaissance Center. Amazing. So clearly it's going to transform, it's going to change the, the landscape of Windsor, Detroit. Um, there's no reason why we wouldn't have an iconic structure like that, which could be uh, with uh, fiber optic lighting, uh, which would Amazing. be able to be uh, uh, to be designed in such a way that it would you know, embrace certain, uh, certain holidays or events. Um, you're right, it's going to be an economic impact for the construction of the bridge, mm -hmm. the operation of the bridge, uh, for the people using the bridge, for the economic stimulus. But beyond that, it's really going to change. This is a once-in-a-lifetime opportunity, uh, an event for Windsor, Detroit. It's the largest infrastructure project 
along the Canada-US border now and for many years to come, one of the largest infrastructure projects in all of Canada. Um, this is a really great opportunity. It's going to change, and I think people should be excited about it. I know for me, I, I cannot wait to be able to experience when it starts getting built. Yes. To start seeing even the infrastructure and the technology needed to build a bridge like this. Right? Exactly. That part excites me, just to be able to see that yeah. happen. Currently, we have about $350 million already under, underway on the Canadian and the U.S. side, uh, preparing the plazas for the bridge. We haven't even started building the actual structure yet. That will happen. That will start next year. Uh, but you're right, the technology for that. How do you get the pieces of the bridge deck into place? Is it brought in by a crane? Do you have to bring it in by barge? Are you cantilevering it over? I mean, all the engineering geeks out there, I'm not an engineer, uh, but this is fascinating to me. It would certainly be fascinating for other people. Looking at how the landscaping is going to be, how do we uh, shelter, if you will, the operation from the host communities on both sides of the border? Um, all very important. This is going to change, and I think, frankly, it's going to wow people. Mark, I just want to thank you again for, for taking time and shedding light on this bridge of the future. Um, Windsor, Essex, get ready. You will have postcards of this new bridge. It is very, very, very exciting times right now. Again, I want to thank Mark Butler for joining us from the Windsor, Detroit Bridge Authority. And again, thank you for tuning in to another edition of Tech in the City. We'll see you soon.